Since the day it was announced, Battlefield 5's journey towards launch has been heavily marred by vocal dissent. Marketing-wise, there was a significant part of the community who did not take kindly to EA and DICE's bizarre display of World War II, and in response, Patrick Soderlund added fuel to the fire by generalizing those criticizing Battlefield 5 as uneducated, while daring them to accept the game for what it is or don't buy it. We then learned that Battlefield 5 was woefully underperforming in terms of pre-order sales, especially compared to competitors like Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and Red Dead Redemption 2, and even compared to past entries in the series, which prompted EA to delay the game from October to November. Making matters worse was that the feedback for the beta was a mixed bag, with many players criticizing some of the changes in mechanics, upgrade system and overall gameplay speed and feel, technical and performance issues, a general lack of content, so on and so forth. The cherry on top of all this was the discovery that Battlefield 5's chat was censoring some rather unusual words. For example, typing in white man in the chat would result in redaction, but similar phrases involving other races would yield no consequence, giving off the wrong impression, particularly when the game is already being heavily denounced by some crowds for appearing too politically driven in its execution. There is also the fact that for some reason, typing in DLC would also result in censorship unless you put the word free right before it, giving off the impression that EA wants to mitigate unwelcome discussions surrounding paid DLC, a business model EA has greedily exploited and been criticized for with numerous AAA releases. Even the word Nazi was censored, a rather strange decision considering Nazis are a pivotal part of World War II, the setting that Battlefield 5 is based on, not to mention the censoring of the word Titanfall, a word that may yield unwanted discussion on Battlefield 5, possibly suffering the same fate as Titanfall 2, a game that you may recall sold poorly due to EA's stupid decision to launch the game sandwiched right between Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1, a circumstance that Battlefield 5 found itself back when it was sandwiched between Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and Red Dead Redemption 2 before reports of underwhelming pre-orders forced the delay. Oh, and I should also mention that the word lag wasn't allowed to be used either, another dubious aspect of the chat. All around, the impression people got from the intrusive censorship in Battlefield 5's chat was that EA was trying to control the messaging of in-game conversations to be favorable towards the game and mitigate free discussion of potential qualms. Now, picking up on the brewing complaints and ridicule, a Battlefield 5 community manager did respond to concerns by claiming that some words like DLC were blocked by mistake, that the profanity filter was something that was still being worked on, and that its sensitivity would be tweaked in accordance to feedback as to not hamper relevant conversation. Some players left it at that, especially since strange words like spaghetti were also discovered to be censored, indicating that some of the censorship may in fact have been unintentional, while others asserted that EA and DICE must have consciously designed the profanity filter to work the way it did, that the censorship wasn't purely accidental given how relevant some of these blacklisted words are to conversations that are detrimental to Battlefield 5's image. As discussions surrounding this issue ensued, DICE multiplayer producer David Serland eventually took to Twitter to further address feedback. When one Twitter user asked why words like white man and DLC are censored in Battlefield 5, Serland responded as follows, because the system is using a dictionary derived from several EA games based on some sort of AI learning algorithm that has tagged certain combinations of words to be escalators to toxic chat or similar. I don't claim to understand how it works in detail. We will change this. So once again, the claim is that aspects of the censorship found in the Battlefield 5 betas chat was not intentional. All I'll say about Serlin's response is that when developing an AI learning algorithm, it is up to the programmer to give it specific goals before it can start learning and fulfilling its function. Somebody had to set parameters in such a way that for some reason, white man is deemed to cross the line while black man is deemed to be okay, in a way that discussing DLC is unacceptable unless the word free is explicitly added or in a way that lag is forbidden to be discussed as well. And with how strangely and even poetically specific some of the conditions of the filter is, especially where the word DLC is concerned, you can imagine why not everyone might buy into the official explanation. Serland also insists that the goal of the filter is to tag combinations of words that may be escalators to toxic chat, 
But the question then becomes, what does EA and DICE deem to be toxic chat? Is it simply a matter of language that could pave the way for verbal assaults between players, or is it also a matter of keywords that may allow conversations that are critical of Battlefield V as a game, or of EA's decisions or practices? Well, at the very least, what's clear is that the impression many people got from the beta's bizarre chat filter is that EA and DICE may have deliberately stretched the definition of what's considered to be toxic chat in their favor. But the official response is that it all had to do with an intended faulty AI algorithm that's still being tweaked. Honestly, I can't declare for sure one way or another, I can only speculate. Spaghetti and other irrelevant words being censored tells one story. DLC that's not preceded by free. Lag and other suspiciously relevant words being censored tell another. What I will say is that EA and DICE have spouted so much bullshit to save face over the years that, for me at least, it's hard not to lean more towards doubt. Either way, only time will tell to what extent the chat filter will be modified in the final game. But even if the final version of the chat filter turns out to be bothersome, it does look like players will be able to get around it altogether. In a follow-up tweet, another Twitter user asked that players be given the option to turn off the filter and read anything if they so desire, like how MMOs do it nowadays, to which Surland responded with a simple, of course. From there, another user asked if this is confirmation that the chat filter can be turned off, to which Surland responded with the following tweet. Yes, like in any other game, more or less. Let's stop assuming the worst possible scenario. It is not censorship, it's anti-abuse in text form. I mean, for example, who'd want an all-team voice over IP you can't turn off? I sure wouldn't. Interesting that this point wasn't brought up in the initial response by the Battlefield 5 community manager, but based on Surland's tweet, Regardless of EA and DICE's intention with the beta's chat filter, it looks like it may end up being a non-issue. I gather that the chat filter will be enabled by default, but if it works as Surland claims, then you'll probably be able to go into the options and turn the feature off with ease. And even if you do decide to leave it on, the sensitivity of the filter will seemingly be tweaked in response to beta feedback, so we'll see if it shapes up to be less bizarre and suspicious. Now, as it stands, Battlefield 5 definitely does have bigger problems to worry about. Marketing for this game continues to be marred by general negativity, and the beta indicated that there is still much work left to be done before the title can live up to lofty expectations and dwindling hype. To their credit, DICE developers have been releasing updates regarding some of the planned changes for the final game, though, and with the delay, they'll have more time to fine-tune and polish the game though whether what's shipped as the final product will be enough to boost the projected underwhelming sales, and whether it'll be enough to change the minds of skeptics, well, that remains to be seen. These are one man's perspective of the current situation anyway. I'd love to hear what your take is on Serlin's clarifications regarding Battlefield 5's chat filter, and on the game's overall state in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.